Hello everyone, my name is LaShawn. And I'm Shingo. And welcome back to our channel, The Oklahoma Life. Today we are going to talk about how to support your partner in the delivery room. So, let's get started. husband Shingo is with me and he's going to share what his experience was like in the delivery room just to kind of give you an insight of like what to expect and what you can do to help your partner out and hopefully not have too many surprises so yeah let's see what he has to say hmm. <laughs> see it's not so easy huh should I go like number one sure I guess we have to back up a bit. We have to talk about how we got there, like getting to the hospital, like how you helped me out and everything. And no, I mean like I ours was relatively easy because you were not, your water wasn't breaking. Mm -hmm. So I gotta explain. We gotta explain the situation first. Okay. It's like our delivery was planned two weeks before, mm -hmm. actually, you know, before the actual due date. Okay, so you can explain all that. God damn it. <laughs> so it was starting on September 25th, right there. Yeah. So her delivery date, or the due date, cut. <laughs> her delivery date was on 26th September, and it was actually planned delivery. Mm -hmm. Her actual due date was two weeks earlier. Later. Uh, later. <laughs> God damn it. It's okay, keep going. I wasn't due until October 8th, but um, we planned to deliver the baby early because the doctor recommended it. So I was induced on September 25th. So we basically went to hospital on 25th, mm -hmm. right? So here's the points. On what I did. Before going to the hospital, you had to pack the hospital bags, the necessary stuff you take to the hospital. So after you give a birth to the you know, child, you stay in the hospital for like at least five days. Right? So you gotta prepare for those items. So the hospital will provide some of the stuff, depending on which hospital you stay. But you still need the basic stuff. They'll give you the wrist to prepare. So, and your partner is pretty much in stress. <laughs> <laughs> I was stressed, yeah. but we did pack the bag yeah. like a, so a couple days your before. job is to pretty much double check or triple check for any missing items. You know, like, and sometimes in the rest it's not included. Like, uh, it's only it stays the mandatory, the necessary stuff. Only. Like the bare minimum. Yeah, the bare minimum. Thing. Thing. Yeah. So you, probably need to ask the partner what you want to bring. So in our case, we took the stainless wrist camera. We took a bunch of stuff. Actually, I have a hospital bag video. Okay, that you just can forget check that. Out. Yeah. yeah, so I'll link that up above. Yeah. And second tip will be securing the transport. The pregnancy taxi. Well, there's that and the other ones. Mm -hmm. So in our case, as she explained, ours was area delivery, so we had no fuss of water breaking and stuff. Mm -hmm. But still, we had to register to uh, pregnancy taxi. Mm -hmm. uh, the normal taxi company does um, tra provide transportation for pregnant women in case of water breaking or just. Okay. So is that any taxi company? Basically any company if you ask them, but usually hospitals have their own preferences. Okay. Well, so in our case was KO taxi. I just asked because um, I have a friend, I think she's in Osaka, and she was trying to find a pregnancy taxi, but when she Googled it, she didn't get a service that was specifically for that. So if she were to call like a regular taxi company and ask, there's a chance that they could arrange that for her. I mean, individual... I mean, taxis run by individuals, they don't do that. It's usually a group company the that they do it. And then probably the big ones. Yeah, I mean, so. small ones does it for the 
money. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Basically, when it was time for me to go to the hospital, he just called them up and they showed a better house and we're ready to go. They already knew like the hospital address and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So that was very easy. Good. And also, hospitals sometimes provide one way, or it's one way to hospital or hospital to house. So you gotta ask them which one you wanna you know, take taxi to. Uh, which one is free, right? Yeah, they provide one. one free ride. Yeah, they provide one free ride. So decide which one you wanna spend on. Yeah. If it's like a plant and you know, like early delivery, you mm -hmm. can probably take public transportation. And, on the way back from the hospital, you can yeah. take the taxi. Yeah. That's probably easy. So I set up the pregnancy taxi previously and booked it. And on the day of our, well, your induction, mm -hmm. I called the taxi and then they ask you if the, your partner's water broke or if it's planned. And I just told them, yeah, it's planned, so there's no water break. So in case you tell them your water is, or your partner's water is broken, mm -hmm. then they have like this blue seat or some kind of waterproof They have like a seat. plastic sheet that they'll put over the seats to protect yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. But if you don't need that, then it's basically a normal taxi that comes and gets you. Yeah. Just hope that the uh, taxi is a new one, you know, the like easy mm -hmm. in and out one. Yeah. The traditional taxi is kind of... Kind of hard to get into. Yeah. yeah, we had no issues. All right, so let's talk about we're at the hospital getting so, signed in. After we got onto the taxi, we arrived at the hospital. Mm -hmm. Your wife will be taken away. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wait. So point three would be after arriving at the hospital, or if you have time, just grab some drinks and snacks for you and your partner. Mm -hmm. I mean, like a lot. <laughs> Especially your, if your partner is, you know, prone for induction or the C-section, mm -hmm. you're gonna have some time to kill. So grab that. And hospitals don't provide <laughs> food for you. Well, they provide food for your partner, but not us. So yeah. So if there's a chance that your partner could be in labor for a long time, then you're gonna want to bring drinks and snacks for not only her, but also for yourself. Mm. You were craving for chocolate. I didn't have much of an appetite, to be honest. Like but whenever they brought me chocolate. food, he ate like 80% of my food. That's right, that was good. <laughs> it was good food, but <laughs> when you're in labor, you don't feel like eating. Mm. Yeah. So number four would be that bring a cushion for yourself to sit down. Your partner will be most likely be you know laying on the bed most of the time. But if you decide you're gonna wait outside the delivery room or just your partner's having an induction, you're gonna be sitting a lot. And my my god my ass burns. Yeah, they were were they wooden chairs or plastic chairs? Um uh, mine was wooden chair. That wooden was, chair. It was on chair without uh, you know the back back support. Mm -hmm. That was hellish. Yeah, so the seating can become quite painful. I know it doesn't sound like a big deal, like, oh, well, my partner's in labor, I should be able to tuck it up and, you know, sit in a chair. But to be fair, it was like a hard wooden chair, and after, like, 20 hours of sitting on that thing, his butt was raw. <laughs> also, bring charging. Oh, point five, bring charging. <laughs> Why are you pointing a shark at me? <laughs> point five, bring charger. Shark away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you want to be able to charge your devices um, because you don't want your baby to be born and then your phone battery dies or your camera battery dies. That would be the worst, right? Right. So bring your charger because in his case, he ended up watching a lot of videos. Mm -hmm. Right? What Engaged. else? Playing games. But I have to say, so I have this friend who's a nurse and she was saying that one of the things like men tend to do is request to bring their PS4s <laughs> into the delivery room, like if it's particularly long. Well, I say, don't be that partner. Don't bring your gaming console into the delivery room. That's just, that's just really inconsiderate. He didn't do that. I'm sure he played games on his phone, but whenever I needed help, like if I needed like something to drink or something to eat, he was like there to help me out. 
Yeah, the point six is just do whatever your partner demands. Whatever what? she demands. But she was like, babe, bring water, please. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Even in the delivery room, that was the case. Yeah. So be supportive and <laughs> just bring things to her. So be supportive. And that includes carrying her to a wheelchair. <laughs> she couldn't move, so we had to put her on wheelchair to you know get to the delivery room. From the labor room to the delivery room. Oh, from the labor room to the delivery room. It's but but the but nurse couldn't carry her. I was like, oh. She's this tiny woman. I don't understand. So there's like one nurse who was trying to help me get out of the bed, but my legs were completely numb from the epidural, so I could not move them. I could not stand to support myself. So this woman who like barely comes up to my shoulders is trying to like lift me up out of the bed to put me into a wheelchair. Like, keep in mind I was like 82 kilos and she was like 40 something. I was double her size. I'm not exaggerating. So he actually had to like lift me out of the bed, put me in the wheelchair, and push me off to the delivery room. And I had to put you on the delivery. Yeah, he put me on the delivery table. I forgot about that. So. If it's a C-section, you're not allowed to go in there, but if it's induction or the vaginal delivery, vaginal delivery mm -hmm. then you get to stay there. Yeah. So, if, you, if your partner is already having a big contraction, it's gonna be short. But Shorter. Yeah. Shorter. Mm -hmm. But in our case, we were in there like around four hours. Might have been four hours. Two, three to four hours, so yeah. you're gonna be in there quite a long time and you won't be able to get out that much. For most of the labor process, it was just the two of us together in the room and a nurse would come in occasionally to check on us, right? Just to make sure everything was okay. It wasn't until we actually got into the delivery room that we saw the doctor and one additional nurse came into the room. So he was my support system like the entire time. Serve for me. And food dumps. <laughs> so when the contractions started, mm -hmm. well, she was having kind of weak contractions, so it took quite a while mm -hmm. to actually push. And so. Oh, and that's an important point. I didn't understand how I was supposed to push because I watched a ton of videos, like Japanese videos, to see what you know the process was like. But they didn't use any of the terminology that I had studied. So when it came time to push, I was like, what are they saying to me? <laughs> and he actually had to interpret for me yeah. right then. Point number eight, so you have to probably interpret whatever the doctor used the term. Um, I would say check with your hospital beforehand and ask them. <laughs> like how they want you to push and what they're going to say so that way both you and your partner knows what's going to happen. It seems like a no-brainer but we just assumed it was going to be like all the videos we saw but it wasn't. But in our hospital we were allowed to take pictures and photos. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> in our hospital. In our hospital we were allowed to take videos and pictures so I was just constantly recording what she was doing. You weren't recording me so much. He was recording me, but it was like at a bad moment, you know, where the nurse is like poking around in there. So I'm like, babe, no, 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 stop, stop. And also, you know, her when she came out. Yeah. So yeah, depending on your hospital, you might be allowed to bring your camera. I think most hospitals do let you do that nowadays. Um, at the very least, bring a tripod and set your camera up on the side, but if your partner is up for it, then have them to record for you. They're gonna be ending up recording you anyway, right? That's Our the hospital did, not how hospitals do that. Though. So, I went to this small room, which I believe is like for baby, it's like cleaning up the baby. Yeah, like, mm. So, while I was being stitched up, he was checking out the baby. Yep. Recording her and holding her hand. Mm -hmm. That was good. <laughs> yeah. So he got to see her first, really. Like, when she was born, they put her on my chest, but like, it's really hard to like look down and see her. You know, when she was crying and everything, but he got the first good look at her. So I'm, I'm really glad he was able to record those moments because mm -hmm. I would have missed them completely otherwise. Then I came back and I saw the bread bath. 
blood bath. Tell them what it's. Let them know, like, just how bad is it after the delivery, just so they're they're not shocked at all. Just don't look at when doctor is stitching. I out of curiosity, mm -hmm. out of curiosity, I took a look at it and it's like, hmm. I'm glad I saw the Spratan movie before coming. <laughs> Basically, there's blood everywhere, like everywhere, and yeah. So if you're weak, hard. Yeah. yeah, if you're squeamish, just sit outside. <laughs> yeah. Because you're gonna be right in the center of it, and like unlike the Western hospitals, there aren't gonna be that many people in there. There's only two nurses, one doctor, and us. That was it. So he had a full view of everything going on. Yeah, nurse told me that there are some partner that fainted and they had to take it away. Really? Did you feel faint? No, I was like, yeah. <laughs> but you were surprised, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not too much jigsaw movie, so I was, I'm immune to it. So you were okay. Yeah. So then, yeah, I had to be stitched up and I had a fever for a while. So actually, him and the baby left. <laughs> I was alone in the delivery room because they wouldn't let me go back to my room until after my fever went down. So what happened after you and the baby left? So they took the baby to, what do you call that place? Baby center? The nursery. Oh, the nursery? Yeah. They took her to the nursery. I saw her, you know, being placed there. And it was right after 11 o'clock, almost close to midnight. Mm. And there was no... <laughs> no way for me to get back home so I walked from hospital to home which was nice because I found a little restaurant that was open at me. He could have called a taxi but he was being cheap and he walked all the way home. I think he was just like excited and nervous about being a dad and needed some time to... But I did eat like a two pound steak. What? You had two pound steak after eating all my food? <laughs> Anyway, so he actually had to work the next day, yeah. which is ridiculous, but that's Japan for you. But he got off work early. Usually he wouldn't get off work until like 5.30, but it was like 5 o'clock when the dot, bam, he came bursting through. That was 4, man. 4 o'clock. He came bursting through the hospital door, and he didn't say anything to me. He just walked straight over to the baby and picked her up. She was in her little bassinet bed thing by the window, and he's just like... Hi, babe. Good to see said, you good too. Job, babe. <laughs> good job, babe. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions for me or for my husband, please leave them in the comment below, and we'll be sure to get back to you. So, thanks for watching. Bye.